Hello, my name is Chirag Mehra. I am presenting our paper on behalf of our group at the Children's Neurosciences Department at the Evelina London Children's Hospital. Our paper, in the May 2019 issue of Developmental Medicine Child Neurology, is a system systematic literature review of childhood disintegrative disorder and autism spectrum disorders. This presentation will cover the current issues surrounding childhood disintegrative disorder, or CDD, including its validity as a unique diagnosis apart from autism spectrum disorders, or ASD. I will then explain how our review has added to the understanding of CDD and its relationship to the ASDs. CDD is a rare disorder, which is part of the reason it has been challenging to study. In previous diagnostic manuals, such as the dsm 4 CDD was classified as a subgroup of the pervasive developmental disorders. It shares a lot of features with autistic disorder, including social communication impairments. If one follows the natural history of CDD, it eventually shows a similar phenotype to autism. However, the defining and distinguishing characteristic of CDD is its onset. It presents with regression, the loss of previously acquired developmental skills after two or more years of typical development. Compared to classical autism, it affects a broader set of developmental domains, including toileting control and functional motor skills. The diagnostic validity of CDD, apart from autism spectrum disorders, has been under debate. We already know that CDD is a lower functioning group, for example, with more severe intellectual disability. There are reports of more mental health symptoms in CDD versus ASD. However, there are similarities between the groups beyond impairment in social communication skills. A large meta-analysis found that a third of patients with ASD display regression. However, there is debate about regression in ASD, including what developmental domains are affected, the pattern of regression, and its severity. Regression in ASD is often preceded by abnormal development, in contrast to the picture in CDD. Given this debate, and the currently low quality of evidence on CDD, CDD was removed from the DSM-5 as a distinct diagnostic entity. Using the DSM-5, individuals with CDD would be diagnosed under the replacing umbrella term of autism spectrum disorders, but without a specifier for regression or a marker to highlight the global loss of previously acquired skills, making it even more difficult to study this rare and poorly understood group of patients. To help clarify this debate, we performed the first systematic review on CDD that describes its clinical characteristics. We also sought to compare CDD to autism spectrum disorders, both with and without regression. We searched four databases and included original articles comparing CDD with ASD. The participants with CDD had to meet specific diagnostic criteria. Our three study groups were childhood disintegrative, childhood disintegrative disorder, autism spectrum disorder, and CDD's closest control, autism spectrum disorder with regression. 20 journal articles met our criteria. We included 96 participants with CDD, making this the largest review of CDD literature. The overall le level of evidence on CDD was low. Most articles were cross-sectional in nature. We found the mean age of regression in CDD to be 3 years and 2 months, with a range of 2 to 7 years. We confirmed that CDD was indeed a rare disorder. As expected, co-social communication skill deficits were seen in a majority of patients. Two-thirds of the participants had regression of adaptive skills. Importantly, several CDD participants shared features not in the diagnostic criteria. For example, they all had intellectual disability. In two-thirds two -thirds of the participants, this was a severe to profound intellectual disability. One-third of the CDD participants had seizures. Most participants with CDD either experienced static disorder severity 
or overall improvement over the course of follow-up. We confirmed similarities between ASD, ASD with regression, and CDD, especially in core diagnostic symptoms. <clears throat> with regards to severity, a gradient emerged where CDD was the lowest functioning while ASD without regression was the highest. While all participants with CDD achieved age-appropriate developmental milestones before symptom onset, only 10 to 14% of ASD participants did. Importantly, differences between CDD and ASD were found in the types of developmental domains affected and in the flavor of symptoms. For example, CDD showed a higher prevalence of mental health symptoms, and symptom onset was sudden in 40% of those with CDD versus only 10% of those with autism. A valuable neurogenetic study showed differences in functional MRI correlates of face processing between CDD and ASD. Non-neocortical areas were engaged in CDD during face processing. These areas were also found to have the highest level of CDD candidate gene expression. This gene expression pattern was significantly different to that seen in autism spectrum disorders. Overall, these differences may suggest deferring neurobiology between CDD and ASD. Although there is only low quality data on CDD, the findings of this literature review show that there are enough qualitative and quantitative differences between CDD and ASD to warrant further study of this low-functioning group. This may also help us understand regression in other developmental disorders. Easy identification of the CDD group is therefore essential, but not possible, under current diagnostic criteria. We recommend that future diagnostic criteria should include a specifier for late-onset regression with a descriptor for a more global pattern of deficit, including adaptive skills and disturbance of affect. Thank you for watching this presentation. Here is a summary of what our research has added to the evidence on childhood disintegrative disorder and autism spectrum disorders.